And then do you, do you have, do you have Who's to leading the session? Me. You Who's, like what's your name? Grant. Okay, Grant. Yeah. What's the name of the session? Special micro hub clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're on. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look at the existing one. Uh, this is not working. Um, My screen is on small, but not shown up here. Has been ready. Need to change uh, the channel. That controls something. Yeah, this controls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. Uh, presentation. Look at that. Uh, this is really nice. Uh, is there an HDMI cable in here? Ah, there you go. Ooh, got it. So good. So, uh, already. Um, <coughs> okay, so let's see. Most of them are obviously for text based stuff. Um, so I was looking at things that are not, or they're maybe text based, but they're not about just posts. So, let's see what we have. Um, Inkstone, I'm not sure what it does. It's pretty generic. Yeah. Monaco Reader. Oh, it doesn't um, exist in your website. Yeah. Oh, right. Here's part of, uh, of it. There's only one of that, I guess. So. Uh, on your grand, mostly, it's just an iron text. So on push-up counter, so that's the sort of thing I'm looking at, like weird, mm -hmm. weird options. Uh, Quill is pretty standard. Yeah, standard stuff. Shoe-pub is standard as well. Those are not ones. Teacup for food, so yeah, so it seems to think food is probably well covered. And then uh, RSS in the pub. So replies, so yeah, you can text. Omni Bear for browser, wind winds for, uh, I'm not sure that's for posting replies and likes. So yeah, standard stuff. Um, and poster child's my one. So yeah, it's also standard things. Mm -hmm. I have a couple that aren't on this page. Yep. There's Screech, which is for posting audio. Yep. And uh, there's Slater, which is for posting events. So it makes uh, each events. Nice. Um, I need to add this to OK, good. And does anybody have any ideas of like something that is not already covered, like some type of post that doesn't have a UI yet? Um, screenshots from a live demo. Ooh, that would be interesting. Or just demos in general, or presentations. Well, there are different possible formats. For yeah. example, if you're giving a presentation, one way to um, to preserve and, and share that media is you record it and then you upload that as a video. Uh, another possible way to do that is screenshots at particular moments. Um, it could just be like every minute, or uh, or they could be more curated, like you know, screenshot this maybe per slide or. or but to, to convey in still images the yeah you know, the presentation mm -hmm. uh, maybe along with a transcript or something or at least some notes. Yeah. Um, I have I have something that I use in that way. Uh, I have a MicroPod Media endpoint set up so it can just take files and I have a little automator script so I can like take a screenshot and I do this a lot actually take a screenshot right click it and under services is like send it to my MicroPod mm -hmm. Media endpoint. Cool. And the result is a URL that's copied to my clipboard. So then I can like fire that off to people, which is kind of the most common use case. But I can also use something like Quill to put that in a post, uh, which is a quick way to do that. But it's interesting that it, it kind of like, it only uses one tiny part of MicroPub, which is a media endpoint. Yeah. Uh, I was also interested in, I attempted to make a uh, gallery, uh, like photo gallery uh, client. So it's almost in a similar to a slideshow for just multiple photos and each have titles and descriptions and things and the actual photo. Um, but I never really got around to like doing a good UI for it as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you story. would send a video to your MicroPod though. Oh, no, you have to use it. Yeah. Does that have large? Yeah. Can it handle file upload? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will does that right now. I can I made this proof of concept one that handles way bigger than that. I have managed to do an 80 megabyte, I think it's 80 megabyte gallery photos. No, it's way bigger than that. It's actually 80 photos, each are like 5 meg thick. Mm -hmm. It just takes forever because it uploads them all one go. Uh, so, so, yeah, that can be some proof. Is there any other ideas for reading? Yeah, so uh, what I was thinking for reading 
there's probably there's tons of stuff we could do, so I was trying to start really, really simple. So right now I'm actually manually posting want to read posts. I use Goodreads a lot, and it's like want to read, title the book, yeah. and now I'm linking to the uh, ISBN too, which just redirects to Amazon. So I was thinking of a Microsoft client that would basically just let you enter the title and maybe optionally the ISBN, and then would send that in the microformats, microbub, and uh, at the very least, you know, the, the site on the end could post just the text. Yeah. Or if it supports, you know, interpreting that ISBN, yeah, it could post a link. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then kind of see where that goes when people start using it. In theory, people's sites could start returning as a config query. You know, you could be like, uh, you get a list of books that you've, like, this is what I want to read this, or this is what I'm reading now. So then, you know, the client maybe in the future could say, I'm, you know, reading this, and I'm at this percentage, you know, and it would make that post. So that's getting way ahead. So if you're going to just start with the want to read. So here's, like, and please stop me if I'm going way off track, but um, one of my first ideas for, like, wanting to track my reading is I need it to be really simple. Mm -hmm. um, almost even, like, I'm, I'm holding the book. And let me scan the barcode that mm. turns into an ISBN that opens up my uh, like maybe post where I've already been reading it, and I can add notes, something like that. Like how how far down that rabbit hole are you interested in going? I have honestly, I'm really new to Micropub. I mean, I just recently finally got it set up, and I still barely use it. So it's just like I mean, it works, but I don't use it a lot, and I don't do updating of posts. But that, that could certainly be possible. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I guess the Microphone client could just work with Amazon, the API, and, you know, mm -hmm. scan it, give it an ISBN that returns right. the title and the URL. They have an API that will scan a cover, too, right? Like, you can actually just... Uh, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. So, I start at the top. Does everybody know what Microphone is? Yeah, I learned, like, two days ago, so... Okay. So like, what's your website, by the way? I didn't get you in the attendees um, yet. P-O-D-V-I-A. And I K O V K O V dot com. Um, so at the at the highest level, Micropub is a way of uh, essentially like presenting a form and and then submitting that back to your your website somehow. And there there is a you usually call it the Micropub endpoint, just some service running on the web that accepts these uh, either form-encoded posts, which is just like any boring HTML form, uh, or it accepts uh, JSON data. And Micropub standard defines like several properties that make sense for posting to your site. So things like, when is this posted? What is the name of the post? What is the content? Um, you know, uh, does it have photos or audio files or video files? And those are often just URLs. Um, and so the, the standard defines a lot of, of that in terms of like, what is the shape of the data? But the, the actual spec itself is, is essentially just like, you know, old web CGI, just like you're going to get an HTTP post. And what do you do with that? Some extensions onto Micropub, uh, one of my favorites is media endpoints. So you can have your, uh, your setup say, if you want to send me files, you can just ship them over there. And that, that works the same way. You just like upload it via HTTP post. But then all it does is return a URL. So clients like Quill will use this. You can say, I want to send a photo. And when you specify it, it'll start uploading right away while you, you know, continue to do your thing. And then with JavaScript, when the post is finished, it gets back the URL, it just sticks that in, and it sends it along just like it normally would. Um, some other things that are interesting, uh, Micropub has ways of doing updates. So you can say, I want to update this, the, the post at this URL, and you specify the URL. And then it's got a little sort of micro language where like, you either want to replace a property or add something. So, so like photo can be, technically anything can be an array. So you can say, like, I want to add another photo to this post or uh, syndication links. Uh, there's also querying. So you can ask a Micropub endpoint to give you back either all properties or specific properties of a post. Um, like, that's some, some of the stuff I'm interested in doing with Micropub revolves around that, where, like, I want, I want to make a post where I've specified I want to syndicate it somewhere, and something else actually picks that up. 
and, and queries it and does the syndication. But that could also work like if I have a, a read post because I'm reading a book and I want to add some more notes, like the client could, you know, you, you say like, here's my post about this book. The client says, you know, give me the notes for it, or I don't know what that property is, but um, then you could theoretically have your client change that and you send it back as an update. Right. Yeah. So I think, um, at least like in my understanding, those are some of the building blocks that Micropub has. And if anybody <laughs> has any corrections, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you put it to this Micropub and going on your site? Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you 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 might and you can use third party client to to publish content on your own site. Yeah, that's that's what I've done. And there are some there are some clients that you can kind of just set up and use. Uh, so um, Vox Pelly has one that he uses to uh, basically like update GitHub pages. I think is that he's got a micro pub. Yeah. Uh, endpoint for that. So it's a server that runs and accepts micropub posts and it turns them into a static site file for Jekyll. So it turns it into like a bit of YAML and mm -hmm. then some content and then it commits it to Git and pushes it to GitHub. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's like, I, I built one for myself. That's also how it works. Um, but, uh, Known has one built in. Yeah. I've, I've built a chatbot one, which is a stack that I cut a lot. That's really good. That's cool. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different types of that. So I think as well, what's interesting with like the reach uh, reading and these ones that have extra metadata is whether you choose, like you said, you could send the ISBN, was it, the numbers? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, would it be more correct to send all the information that somebody could potentially want, or should you just send that number and make them then pull the data? from somewhere else themselves. Mm. Uh, should, so, should Micropub clients just send everything they possibly could find or not? I think for the, especially if it's a project that I work on this weekend, I mean, I was thinking like, yeah, dead simple. Yeah, so absolutely. like minimum the title, you know, yeah. and that's, so just text. Um, ISBN would probably just send this to ISBN and leave it up to them. The client could definitely integrate with Amazon in the future. Um, so like for me, I just recently, in the last couple months, I added uh, slash ISDN to my site, and then any number after that will automatically redirect to Amazon. So I can own my permanent links for books, and I can redirect it somewhere else. That works on my site too. Yeah, I stole it from you actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone on our IRC? Feel free to use the dev channel for this. Okay. Okay. So that's that's you, you all. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, personally, we just thought if if you if the client is capable of sending extra data, it's better to send it from the client than require the uh, consumer to gather more data. Yeah, there and are there are some interesting examples of this. So, yeah. like um, own your swarm, if you tell it to, uh, will send a whole object for for a check in. So, like. The check-in property will have a bunch of sub-properties that are like the latitude, longitude, name, street address, and um, like theoretically, the client knows what to do with that. Uh, for other things, like um, so, I've, I've got an events poster uh, at Slater. Uh, do we want to look at some of these? Would that help? Would that be helpful? Sure. I don't know. Um, to look into clients. Yeah, to, to just like see how they work, because I, yeah, I can yeah. show um, this later. Yeah, do you want to just open it? Uh, sure. And it's, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot to look at. Oh, can this... No! Uh, let's see. Yes, this will work. My resolution is super tiny. I don't know why. Um, so I'm logged in here to this Micropub client. And a lot of this looks like anything else, uh, but I have some niceties. So I, I like to post all my Homebrew website stuff events to my actual website. And I built this basically to do that. So some niceties in here. I have like an event picker, uh, or sorry, a date time picker. So like now that's, you know, this is when the event starts. 
There's optional when it ends, we make a little multi-day event. Um, and in the in the background, this is just like setting a nice, uh, like I think MicroBuck specifies date formats. If not, it uses micro the micro formats as <coughs> um, Time zone, like this stuff is all pretty brain dead right now. Uh, but for location, so to go back to your thing, like I didn't want to build like a super fancy client that's like talk to a venue database and blah, blah, blah. So instead I did something really dumb that just works on my site, which is I made a, a set of venues and like each of these venues has a permalink. So uh, like single carrot theater. And this is actually what I send back. So um, when this post gets saved, it's actually up to my, my site to be like, I recognize that URL it has an H card, like I, it pulls that data, yeah, gets the H card, yeah. and then uses that. So I, I've seen examples of both. Yeah, yeah. I think the the issue with that then is it just it only works on your site, doesn't it? Like, right, or it requires you to like follow that pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Sorry, was that uh, that was Slater? Yeah, that was Slater. And then um, I've got another one, Screech, where I took like a different approach. So. Um, this is for uploading audio. Let's see. I can do like the last, this is an indie web. And so this will actually pull out information from the MP3 file. And these are non standard. Like this is, um, these are not properties that are specified in the MicroPub spec. Uh, so I just send them as like ID3 dash whatever to indicate where they came from. Uh, but then I also use it to like build the name of the post automatically. Yeah. So, like, in this case, like, that was really easy to implement. So I, I just did it because I thought that's neat and saves the server some work. Uh, for location, like, honestly, it's not even clear to me how this should work. Um, so, I, so I just punted and, like, required the server side to do more. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's script while you're <laughs> I, can, I, can, I guess I'll show the uh, photo poster one I have. So I got it. I, I think I put it on the wiki at some point, maybe. But uh, I have it at photoposter.tpxl.io. Um, so it is like absolute bare bones. So you can go and choose files and just pick uh, some photos. Then upload all of them. Uh, at one go. So this is the this is the issue at the moment is you have to sit and wait. If so if you have a whole lot of them, mm -hmm. you have lots. So and it's no progress information? Uh, no, I've not done any JavaScript stuff in it. So it's, it's static almost. Like there's just a, a bit of the old in the back end. And then I'm not sure there's any set rules for how to post galleries yet uh, with MicroPub. So the way I do it is it send three uh, send an individual mm -hmm. photo post for each one and then a uh, overall post for the gallery and then you have to manually mash them all into an actual uh, gallery post on your website but it just pulls out the, the file names as well mm -hmm. so it's sort of somewhat similar when you say mash it together into a gallery yeah so, so like it. your server is responsible for saying this is a gallery post yeah know what to do yeah so you have to hide the photo post. Oh, I see. Otherwise, it'll just be a big stream of photos. Sorry, what's the main domain on that? Photo yeah. poster. Oh, what? Ttxl. Io. Hmm. So, so you, you you both develop a client and server. Uh, so the client is this is the client. Yeah. So that and you create the client first. Yeah. And the server also you created. Yeah, but uh, everybody has to have their own. I think it's that a correct terminology to say it's your server. Uh, that that consumes the microphone. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It it's is pretty different. typical, I think. Other than, well, I don't. There are some that's like you can just pick this up and use it. If you use WordPress, there's a plugin that uh, Ryan Barrett made uh, that gives you MicroPub in WordPress and only supports a certain number of things, but it's there. And then Known also comes out of the box with micro. You have to enable it. It's not enabled, mm -hmm. but it's it's got a built-in MicroPub server. Uh, so it can accept MicroPub. So then so you can use server to serve uh, client. Mm -hmm. Yes, but and, and like the question is sort of like what does your server support? 
versus what does the client send. I think for a lot of these cases, um, like the reason I built Screech was because no client sent audio. And uh, at the time, neither did my MicroPub server because I had built it, like I, I built the server against clients that existed so I could easily test it. And, and so like I built those in tandem, but theoretically it should work for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Quill is a really good uh, like uh, representative client. Yeah, like you can sign into it and it'll tell you like, okay, you were able to log in with India off, but we didn't find an endpoint or something, you know, so we add this. And uh, another idea for a client. Uh, so in addition to having check-ins where you say, okay, I'm, I am at IndieWeb Summit, so I've, I'm posting about a relationship between me and an event, uh, one could also say, oh, I just met Grant. Mm -hmm. uh, which um, maybe you don't want to post all of that information publicly, but I think that would be valuable uh, within a limited community where uh, you've got the yeah, the friends of friends, web of trust, and you, and you know who knows who. So what sort of things are you, sorry, can you give me an example? Like what you mean as far as, like what would you be posting? Um, just, well, in, in, analogous to the check-in where I'm saying, you know, I am at IndieWeb Summit, mm -hmm. uh, I could say, you know, I have met Grant. I'm very, oh, okay. So I, I, mm -hmm. I'm vouching that there is an actual human being going by this name. And, right. And that's, that reminds me, like, kind of blew past this, but a lot of the vocabulary in MicroPub is uh, based on microformats. So like, it tends to be the case that like, if there is already a use case where people are marking things up a certain way and sharing them, then that tends to be the recommended way of posting it with MicroPub as well. So like, uh, if I was going to say I did a meet, a, a meet of Josh, then I would probably send an H card back. Like, and that, and, and H card is pretty open. It could just be his URL, but it could also be like his name or even broken down like first name, last name, phone number. You know, you can go nuts with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know, like, I could see that as a, um, a micro pub client that posts to my personal address book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they don't always have to be public. I have a, a lot of interest actually in figuring out specialized micro pub clients that posts private posts. So things like teacup, um, the push-up counter I thought was also interesting. Yeah. I or what, what if, what if uh, some, somebody hands you a business card and you take a photograph of it with your phone and it OCRs it? Mm -hmm. And it could convert that into a and, micro pub. And it would give you the photo and the fields. Yeah. I don't know if the, if the strict requirement in micro pub spec, but I know it's a common practice to send through a summary property, which is a common micro format, especially for each entry. So basically, if you if your, client, if your server does not support, you know, food posts or whatever, um, like Teacup will send through its own micro format for like, I forget what it is. It's like a drink hub or eat. Right. And if, if you support parsing those properties, you can do whatever, you know. But if you don't support any of those, you at least get the, the summary, which is just like, I eat a taco. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just like you yeah, got that string. Mm -hmm. I think that's, a, that's important to remember for any specialized one is use summary yeah. as fallback. So like yeah, with the yeah. books, you know, it'll just be. Yeah. Graceful degradation. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there been any part of the spec where you, you can make things private yet? I'm sure there is. You can make it. That's entirely up to the server. Yeah. Actually, while I was implementing it, because I, I really wanted to do it for photos, because that was like the, yeah. the biggest pain point. And yeah. While well, I was testing that, all my posts were. Private, but that was like on my CMS side. Yeah, I, I just have it as a category. I have a private category just now, but I feel there maybe as a use case for you can have post be drafts. So mm -hmm. should, maybe they have it now. Actually, should be able to make it private. I'm not that hundred percent. So actually, like in the client, you check a box. Yeah. So with the category, you're just using some other web server config to like. Yeah, I just type it. Yeah. So it just pulls out everything that's not in the private category. Right. That's a good idea. <laughs> so a question about your location example. Mm -hmm. So you say that on the back end you actually have like a list of corrupt variants, but on the client you didn't it's like free from input mm -hmm. yeah, is, is it like uh, are you supposed to do it whatever like use that uh, Query it. So you, you, on a client, you actually query for possible values, 
and then for populators is, is like select box, and then it would be the, the correct way. So you actually query my microprop to give you possible yeah. values. So I don't, in this I don't. There's like not a correct way right now, but that that's something I've thought about is um, extending micropub queries to say like give me a list of venues, or, or maybe it even takes a search, where it's like, give me a list of venues, yeah, yeah. here's what they've typed so far, yeah. or here's where I am. Um, and that's that's just like something that hasn't been, I don't think anyone's built it yet, and so there's not like a, a right answer. But I think that would be great. And it would get a lot of people, I think a long way towards getting off of things like Swarm, because mm -hmm. uh, Aaron and, and a bunch of folks do this now with Own Your Swarm, which is, um, I would say it is a specialized microphone client. Like it, it takes things on one service and then turns them into MicroPub. Uh, and they've got that, that user experience down. So like you open Swarm, you say, I want to check in. It knows, you know, exactly where you are. It's got a great list of venues and it's almost always exactly right where it's like you're here. So it's very quick to just like open that up, do the thing, and when you submit it to Swarm, then Own Your Swarm will pick it up immediately and fire it off to your website. And that saves you having to build your own client because it, it lets you piggyback on their, their hard UI work. I wonder if I want to do the same with uh, Goodreads, for example. And they have API, but I, I think you can't. It's like you need to mention on your site that you use the API and, and you actually can't store the data anywhere like more than 24 hours. Wow. I've not used this, but I know uh, there's a service called SiloPub, which uh, oh, right. silo.pub. Um, Kyle in our community wrote that, and it lets you posse like post to silos, and it includes Goodreads. Um, I know it includes like posting reviews, um, which I think basically anytime you add a book or something, it is basically a review whether or not you've entered review text. Um, so it might be the same thing, you know, like if you're adding a review for a book, and maybe you specify that it's on your to read shelf. No, no, that I'm saying like more, for example, in your client, you want to provide just uh, ISBN, uh -huh. and you want to fetch all the rest of the information from Goodreads. Oh. And I think that it's not a trivial, like according to the terms of service. No, yeah, yeah. I, I would probably actually use Amazon before I use, well, it's, it's, the, same it's the same company, yeah. But, but I mean, yeah. I've, I've worked with it, it's been years, but I've actually done some stuff with the Amazon API for, like posting books that I'm reading on an old CMS unit or in you have. Is it just like Amazon book, Books API? Uh, I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> um, is there any ways people know of uh, the, any libraries or anything that exists to make creating these? Specialized clients more easy. Like I've made a, a node one that's sort of like a helper wrapper just to do micropub mm -hmm. stuff. So you just can give it to say a host and then just give it the JSON and then mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the authentication and stuff. So that helps like writing new clients. Also. I've made a little progress on this for Python. Yeah. Um, I think. I think uh, Kyle Mahan did uh, Flask MicroPub, which actually handles authentication more than anything else. It, um, and, and I used that and wrapped it with uh, one that I released called Flask IndieAuth, which actually, like, I don't, I'm, like, this is deep in Python and Flask internals, but essentially, like, it sets up some common endpoints, so you can just include that in your Python app, and then you don't have to think about the authorization part. Uh, which is kind of a nice step. And my, my goal is to create kind of like Python building blocks so that in Flask you can you can have like generic support for like, you know, make your you make your form, put whatever fields you want on it, and that will handle sort of like you said with, with the JSON, that will handle turning that into micropub, making sure you do the authorization. Um, I don't I don't have that part packaged yet. I've basically uh, I've built out two different clients, and I have another one planned that I want to do to help syndicate posts. And I, at that point, that's three projects that I can look at and like pull out the common bits. Mm -hmm. um, but those are also in GitHub. So if anybody wants to help and you like Python, it would be a good start. Because I, I would love to see just like a proliferation of really weird MicroPub clients. It would be really sweet if they were just like you did bang out a strange one. Even for posting chickens. Exactly. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, um, speaking of animals, uh, this is a bit of a yak shape, but I've been developing a programming language, and I'm looking forward to using that for implementing mm. uh, MicroPelp and other Indie web stuff. Um, uh, I don't know if anyone else has tried doing the clients with JavaScript as well, but the other big issue if you try and do it front end is cores. Yeah. Always run into that. If, you do, if people don't have their server set to allow mm -hmm. cores requests, then you will run into that constantly. Yeah, that's a really important thing. Cores requests. Yeah, so that's a cross origin oh. response. Resource sharing. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So basically, if you make a request from your front end uh, from a browser, to a server, I'll be like, no, we don't allow this. It only talks to other servers, basically. Mm -hmm. Basically, how it ends up working, but it's much more technical. Well, it's just, yeah, the, the server has to respond to it. Um, uh, the GP header, the basically says, I can do that. Um, yeah. 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 So there's no, uh, there's no rule about whether you have to enable that or not to have a MicroPub server. So that means that front end clients can be difficult. You'd have to check if the if the server supports cars. So like for that gallery one, that'd be useful. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be the media endpoint with maybe I could do it, but uh, it'd be useful to like be able to upload one thing at a time, blah, 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 so. Thank you very much from you guys. You want to chime in? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question. Uh, someone mentioned Vox Pelli's endpoint that converts uh, MicroPub to a Git. For static side, is, does that have a name? Oh, uh, yes, it does. Where would that be? Maybe under Microphone to get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Web, web page, microphone to get out. What is it? Web page? Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Is that for posting like issues or? Uh, no, that's for you host a static site on GitHub pages. Oh, okay. And so this will uh, accept MicroPub posts, create a Jekyll file, um, commit everything to Git, and push it to your GitHub page. Cool. Yeah, I don't really know what uh, we're taking from here to do. What are you, what are you saying? So, uh, yeah, I, I, I go around, like, I guess we should start. Like, what, is, uh, what does everybody want to do with MicroMob? Even just one thing. Um, I'm basically just getting started actually implementing things for IndieWeb, so uh, I could really go anywhere from here. Uh, since my programming language is kind of weak on parsing at the moment, but it's really good at generating um, other formats, uh, text or binary, so uh, I'm thinking I would start with uh, submitting, uh, my, uh, submitting posts of, of some kind. I want to do check-ins, um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not the same thing from on um, Swarm. Yeah, I don't want to be dependent on Swarm. Um, yeah. And also, I don't want to give them all my data. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That just makes them even stronger. Than yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, did Chrome have a question? Is like, where to get uh, yeah, the location data? I guess the main thing. Mm. So I was thinking about Wikidata and looking at some other sources, but it's it's just yeah very difficult to find something that you can just use. maybe OpenStreetMap. Yeah, OpenStreetMap. Um, it doesn't have all the locations, so you probably also want like you need to dedicate the OpenStreetMap submission so that you can actually add new variables. True. true. Um, so or even just a field to override it, you know, like. I didn't find it in the database, so here's the <laughs> coordinate, and then just add your name for the venue. Yeah. I'm interested in using it for photos more. Um, like I said, I got it set up for that, but I still, I'm still stuck in that mindset of you know always going to my site admin area to post. And even though I know it works, I still feel a little weird about like I'm posting it to Quill and then it's doing stuff, but it's worked. I mean, I posted like 
the two photos of the schedule grab really quickly today on my phone. So that was good. And then repost, of course. I'm uh, just beginning and uh, just trying to see how to add MicroPub to uh, Jekyll. And, and mm -hmm. so I'm really glad to hear about the Fox Pelly's. Yeah. I'm looking at some different publishing models that I think make MicroPub's like. The, is like the the most common denominator. Of, yeah. Like, yeah. Like that should sort of be the standard. And then yeah. like it, like you're talking about like I'm working for a podcasting startup. And it's like how do you move how do you move like gigantic amounts of data around? So I'm thinking mm -hmm. the peer to peer type stuff. Mm. So um, how would that work with this sort of stuff? So, uh, experimenting with some customers. Microphone to AWS or something. <laughs> um. I, I mostly use my personal site to um, to keep in reviews for books, and that's like static site. And I'm working for myself, like personal personal CMS that generates that site. And I just like learned about MicroPub, and it feels that like this CMS should should be my, my MicroPub server. So I, I I should implement it. I should implement MicroPub and endpoints there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I really just want a, a week to full to gallery, so it's not annoying. It's <laughs> simple and uh, yeah, it just doesn't, doesn't get in your way to try and do it. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. How does authentication technically work with MicroPub posts? Um, technically, it can work with anything that's OAuth. Uh, like that that's the only real requirement is that you post with some bearer token that says I'm authorized to do this um, but typically it's implemented with indie auth uh, okay. most often like indieauth.com yeah uh, but that's uh, a good thing that like Gregor brought up about um, quill is that it's uh, it's set up to like gently walk you through setting up your site to uh, at the very least like delegate your authentication to something like India. Is it, if I'm posting to my own site, uh, I don't, I don't see why I should have to you know, go to a third party for for authentication. Uh, and you don't have to. Uh, if someone just made uh, was it Ben? Self off. Yes, yeah, self yeah. off was just posted. It's a PHP based like single file, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like drop this in, and you can use that instead of India auth. Like the current India auth flow um, uses what's called Realm auth to get the list of links on your page that says this is me. It verifies that they go both ways, and then it will let you delegate to say like, get out. Like if I can log, if I can prove that I own this Twitter account, then that's good enough proof that I sh I can post yeah. to this website. And self auth says like, just log me in. It's really just your own path. You set a password, and they have a script. It's PHP, so you put it in your server. It gives you a little form. You basically enter your password, and then it gives you the output of your whatever the PHP file is. You put that on your server, and then you can use that. So instead of sending to Twitter, or there are other options that don't rely on silos. There is like in will you use email or even GPG. So if you don't want to be so connected to silos, the key thing is that with India, you're probably getting into the a little bit, but like. Those are just like one-time authentication. So it's not like you're saying I'm always going to use Twitter or GitHub. If they get replaced or something better, we can easily add that in as an option. Oh. Okay. I'm thinking I'll use public key crypto with uh, Ed25519. Okay. Yeah, the, the nice thing about it is that technically the only thing you need to support is OAuth. Like you need to pass an OAuth code that says like I'm verified and that the server can you verify. Can, uh, is that something about people joining us? I think so. It's a bit tricky though. Um, yeah, I, th I think I still saw one where it was. Ah, hello. Uh, we just switched to our video. We see you now. Hello. Uh, there is one that didn't actually require authentication, so you, anybody could just mm. post to a website. So it would be like for public submissions. Right, and and why not? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, spam. Oh, you're talking, sorry, we're talking about the comment thing, or anonymous comment, India. Yeah, comment no, free. Yeah, yeah, that might be it. I'm yeah, sure. open, yeah. open yeah, or moderated submissions is an invitation for spam and worse. Oh, yeah, absolutely, but it's, it's 
it does have valid use. Of, uh, well, I guess you probably just yeah. It's fine as long as the as long as the people that you're worried about don't know about it <laughs> and don't have a reason yeah. to bother you. Quill has a review interface. Oh, right, you can post reviews. Right, you realize that. Pretty new. Yeah, you get high people. Um, yeah, so I think there's any answer. Any answer? Can someone show the demo? Can someone show the demo? We're going to do a quill demo. Grant is going to post something very heartfelt and <laughs> confessional, very personal. Yeah. So this will show you uh, the end deal. Was, um, although I've had it not working quite a lot recently. Oh no. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. There you go. It doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't. It stops redirecting me correctly. Oh, oh weird. Might need to clear all your data. Yeah. Like that. What are those different colors mean in the chrome? Oh, yeah. Uh, the blue versus red. It's just based off of the page. It's based off of like the uh, icon usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a valid. It's a valid. Like a, like, yeah. Uh, okay. So. And we also, yeah, so he's got all the different types of books. Okay. Yeah. And I think the editor is like sort of fancy writing a big think piece or something. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like the uh, medium text editor, I think, like you highlight and then do bold and stuff. So that was cute. Well, so yeah. it into mm -hmm. Oh wow! I didn't even know. Yeah, ah. so, so there are drafts and published, but there's not private. I don't think. What is it? Do you know offhand? Like, what does it send through? Is it just a property? Like, yeah, draft? I think so. Five minute warning. Yeah, I think you find it. Can't put any closing statements or actions to, to hand out to folks. We hold these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> Uh, that is, yeah, so let's um, let's finish up. Yeah, go ahead and your post. Oh, so this is the nice editor, yeah. which is based on the medium editor. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it is very fun. What's interesting, uh, one of the interesting things about this is that it uh, will send the content as HTML. So a lot of posters will just send like text. Oh no, something went wrong. Halo too large. Oh, uh, it's because the photo is so huge. So oh, yeah, there is a four megabyte limit. limit. Yeah, uh, the, the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was like the article interface. This is more for like notes, you know, just plain text stuff. Yeah, and then you can choose what the, if you've got a set up, it can read your config and let you choose what to send it to. And you, so you have uh, micro pop and point on your side. Yes. God, that's a lot of it. So that's what I've got. I'm logged in, so I see the raw data, so you can see that's what it sends. So it sends. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, stuff inside of the yeah, micro pop. Uh, yeah. And I just do some stuff with that data. How do you know what content type is it? Is because it's just a content. How do you can you say content type? Or can you actually accept, uh, add some extra data? It's based off of you, you just look at what uh, properties are filled in usually. Mm -hmm. If it has a like of, 
uh, property, then it's considered a like usually. Basically, I think is how it works. Yeah, there's a <laughs> there's actually a draft document for this now called like post type discovery, and it's it's more about just like what are the properties? Does it have a photo? It's probably a photo post. Yeah. Um, not only. <laughs> Just let you know there's fresh coffee. Ooh, thank you. Thank you, Drew. And I think brownies. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah. To pry you away from your laptops. And so you, you can you said you can also delete it. Uh, can you delete that your phone from school? Uh, uh, yeah, it does swell or Micropub does swell. I don't think it does. It's like up to the client too. Micropublish.net is a fun one that actually has editing support, and I use that for updating my syndication. So like I'll make a post to my site and then I'll go by hand post it to Twitter and Facebook. And then in micropublish.net, I can edit my original post to say also on here and here. And um, uh, I do think we have, uh, we have implementations that do delete and also even undelete. Uh, we'll yeah, micropublish create, that too. Create, update, delete, undelete. Undelete. Yeah, undelete. Yeah. Undelete. yeah. Undelete. yeah. <laughs> Drew, whatever. One. Yeah, there's a silly acronym for it. Um, takeaways. Everyone build more micropub. Yeah, we we do need. I think tomorrow we we'll build all the micropub. I think I think we do. It's clear that we need more like generic kind of micropub server and client libraries that make it easy. Yeah. I I think I really want to figure out like. What what is the tool set that you need to, to be like? I want to bang out a stupid microphone client that does X. Yeah. And like, bam, 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 there it is. And that would be rad. Yeah. Cool, cool question. So, like, is this types of post was it taken actually from 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 your microphone server? I, as I custom to to what your server supports? In, in cool. Uh, just, uh, no, 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 just generic. Yeah. Did someone say earlier that you can indicate a private post via Microsoft? I think you can't yet. Yeah. Oh, you can't. Uh, I mean, you can, you can send arbitrary properties. So you can have, like, visibility. I, I forget what Quill sends. Because Quill has that, like, draft versus public. Yeah, that is. Okay. Okay. And, and I think that just sets a flag. Oh, does the spec have? Yeah, it has, it, it has draft, at least. I don't think it has private. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it is. Um, sure. You can also, yeah, the spec, I mean. Yeah, also, you can set a date if you server supports the date property. So you could just set that to like a million so years in the future. future yeah. <laughs> but I'm disappointed the number of clients that support. Option. Yeah, pretty easy. I like to schedule. I've got the ability to. Oh, right. I was going to say, like, I don't support my endpoint, doesn't support it, so yeah. I can never really use it anyway. Yeah. If we have to disconnect or something. Uh, Tom's like, will come and set it up. Because he has to stop and start working. Hello, new people. Goodbye, new people.